All right, so I'm finally going to do an in-depth um, sort of rig rundown review sort of deal on the gear that I use and how I use it and whatnot and bullshit and blah 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 and that and so on and so forth and stuff and everything. So we'll start um, with the sticker. Um, Studies have shown that, in fact, emo does suck, so um, emo kids can basically cut upwards, not across. Okay. Um, it's loaded with um, the 12AX7 tubes. Those are covers on them and shit. Um, these tubes are kind of kind of funky they they um their 6L6 is normal but they actually can switch to EL34s which I have it switched to EL34 right now you see that it says 6L6 GC EL34 bias select basically when you turn them to EL34s they, they burn hotter it's a little louder i've noticed um, yeah, it's got the effects loop and everything. I don't use the effects loop right now. Um, bias testers. It's got this damping switch. It makes my, pretty much my distortion, you know, loose gain, mid, or tight gain, you know. Um, I can switch the ohms on the head, which is another awesome fucking feature. Another level out. Um, come to the front of the amp. Of course, you guys all know this is a PV Triple X, which I painted the faceplate myself. I'm sure you can tell it looks kind of haggard, but I like it that way. That's kind of what I was going for. But, um, so this is how I have it set my main chunk chunk channel that I'm usually playing on. Okay, so the trouble's around here, so I can get a bit of a cut. Um, the mids are, you know, not very high. I don't like a whole shitload of mids, because I'm more of a metal player, obviously. I usually put more mids on this channel, because this channel I basically just use for, you know, like, classic, more classic distortion, more of a crunch sort of deal. Um, bass sweet thing about this head the bass response for this it just comes through so tight I can roll the bass all the way on and it fucking just rocks and uh, I'll tell you how I get the bass super tight in a minute um, gain people think I'm going nuts with the gain honestly it's not even like I have it rolled up fairly high right now normally it's you know more down in this range but that's about all as high as I go this channel obviously lower they have individual volumes per channel clean channel um, the EQ changes on that quite a bit depending on what guitar I'm playing with I'm fucking really picky with clean and uh, I don't know I'm not huge on this this amps clean channel I'm trying to get another like combo amp to try to put in the in the whole series and shit. Um, of course, the uh, Marshall JCM 900 1960 lead cab with the G1275s. Um, they have plenty of headroom, so they got a really good bass response. And I would like to get 100 watt speakers in there. 100 watt selections because the headroom seems to handle that that tight punchy bass response a little bit better um but for right now this is fucking smoking man it's i've played this head through a lot of different cabs this one is by far the best so we'll go to guitars uh first off my acoustic if you guys have seen my acoustic in the videos, um, you'll notice I took off the the pit guard that was originally on there. 
Um, you know, sp spruce top, rosewood fingerboard, and it's got this um, burl ash back and sides, which is just fucking gorgeous. Like, look at the grain in that wood. It's just astounding. Mahogany neck. But look at that shit, man. You can see the grain on the inside of it, too. Without the toner. It's pretty cool. Sounds great, too. I had to do a little bit of work. I got these, uh, these, uh, aftermarket bridge pins. They're brass bridge pins with abalone in them. They're a little expensive for fucking bridge pins. They're like, 35 bucks or something, 40 bucks. Um, I've been bouncing back and forth between strings for acoustics. Um, I've been trying some of the Ernie Ball stuff. Um, they got the the uh, Everlast um, Earthwood coated whatever strings. And honestly, it doesn't even seem like there's a coating on them, but they sound awesome. They sound really good. Um, despite what other people say, coated strings don't sound as good as natural strings. So, I mean, if you, you know, want to deal with some of your, your highs and your articulation getting, you know, kind of drowned out a little bit, which it does, it's a fact. The fucking manufacturers would even tell you that. I mean, it's just, it's the nature of the beast. You, you want your strings to last super long. He got a sacrifice and sounded just a tad, so I tend to go for more natural sort of strings. Um, in some aspects, I do use elixirs, the polywebs, just because they last like crazy, but when I'm just beating around like this, or if I'm recording, I use um, usually Ernie Ball acoustic string, which is weird because I've can't stand Ernie Ball electric strings. They seem to break all the fucking time and they don't have the sizes I like. But their acoustic strings sound great. I guess they got those new ones, those alumi al aluminum brass shit. I don't, aluminum bronze, some, some sort of shit. I guess they're louder, sound better. Come over here. It's a mess down here. I mean, I don't really, I'm not down here a whole lot other than just you know, playing music and stuff. And uh, sometimes I'll work on guitars down here. This is my little bench full of shit that I, you know, have stuff to work on guitars with and different assorted CDs. And <laughs> um, <laughs> You'll see I have guitar shit lying everywhere from random guitars. You know, I have <laughs> some loaded pit guard. I got a fucking random neck. I got a body that was built, hand built, by one of my buddy's dads when he was in prison. Well, it's not his real dad. His mom married him or whatever, but this thing's pretty pretty cool. He made it an arch top. Look at the fucking, look at that. Isn't that cool? I don't even know what the hell that, that this wood is, but it fucking sure looks awesome. Um, okay, so, the fender. Um, I've been having to tweak this thing quite a bit. Um, it's kind of a bitch. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. Uh, I want to put some locking tuners on it and shit. I'm not a huge fan of the fender radius. That fucking, what, like 7.5 or 9 or something like that. I don't know. That radius is too rounded for me. <sighs> These pickups, don't like them at all. Um, I mean, other people love them. I don't. I want the authentic single coil sound for the Strat. I mean, that's kind of what the Strat is all about. I like that sort of sound, even though I don't really like single coils. That's kind of the point of this. I hate the volume knob where it's at, so I need to take that off. 
but as you know, it's got the kill switch and the this and it, this this switch just turns on all these in series, which is the dumbest thing ever. It's not a coil splitter. Um, this bridge I am going to be replacing because it is the stupidest design ever. Look at those fucking heads, screw heads sticking up there. Fucking dumbest thing ever. Cutting into my hand. Ugh. So I'm going to get some nice ones that aren't just these little bent metal piles of shit. These classic ones. I fucking hate them. So, um, I've either going to put on a hip shot bridge or this, uh, just aftermarket, like, Wilkinson bridge. It's cool. But this is, this is going to be my sort of, you know, stratty fucking... Red Hot Chili Peppers sound and, you know, Jimi Hendrix sort of style guitar once I get those, the other pickups that I want to get. Okay. Okay. I'll have to sit down for this. Just a second. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. This is my Jackson DKMG. Volume tone. Um, this is a, basically, it, it's not... It's licensed under Floyd Rose. Normally those suck and they never fucking stay in tune. This one happens to actually be the shit, honestly. It's uh, basically designed off the the uh, Floyd Rose Pro, you know, so these aren't back here going out. They're right here and it's just kind of set up a little different. The only difference is these fine tuners aren't laid back like that. But, as with most of my electrics, got the EMG81, this is the EMG85, Rosewood fretboard, um, flame maple top, mahogany back, um, Rosewood fingerboard, maple neck, um, jumbo frets, you know, all that shit. It's bolt-on neck. Um, oh, I actually put the back plate on. Oh, I'm, it's because I was trying to sell this guitar. Um, I like her, but I don't love her, you know, <laughs> like my other guitars. Like, I'm not one of those kind of people that just frivolously gets guitars because they're tools or whatever, you know, like... I form a kinship with my instruments and I love them. You know, they're they're a part of me. You know, they're like friends to me. So I learned to love them and take care of them and you know. But they do get battered no matter what I do. This has a little chip. And I haven't even gotten to play play a show with this particular guitar yet. Hopefully it'll get its day soon. If I can find musicians that are worth a shit here. <laughs> um, this is my Fernandez Monterey. This was the second guitar that I got out of my, you know, professional nice guitars. Um, this show, this thing has played almost every single show I've ever played in my entire life, except for. Like, I think like six shows before I got it. Um, so it's, it's got, you know, some wear and shit, volume and this and little chunks taken out here and there's shit on the headset. You can't really see it from here, but we used to, my, my old, old band, we used to play at this place in my town called the underground and, uh, the roof was really low, like from the state, you know, on the stage or whatever. And, uh, you were basically face to face with the fucking crowd and it was literally underground. And so the ceiling was, you know, really low. It was only like a seven foot ceiling or eight foot or something. I don't know, but I would do 
you know, guitar throws and spins and all sorts of crazy shit and going nuts and stuff. And I would bang the headstock against the fucking ceiling, <laughs> you know, like the popcorn textured shit falling all over my fucking head and stuff while I'm playing. And yeah, it was good times, but this also, um, the bridge, I don't know if you can really see it. It's starting to wear down. Um, just from years and years of playing it. Mostly stage wear. Like, when I play it on stage, I'm, I, I'm aggressive as hell. It's got these little skull knobs on the tone because I never touched the fucking tone knobs on this. What kind of metalhead ever touches the fucking tone knobs? I don't know. Um, this is kind of odd, and people have commented on this before. Yes, obviously I have an active EMG-81 right here, and I have a Seymour Duncan Jazz right here. And people are always, you know, like, what the fuck? You know, that doesn't make any sense. Like, is there a big j volume drop? No, honestly, on this, like, it seems to work somehow. It just, the, the coupling, it sounds fucking amazing on here for some reason. I don't know what the deal is, but... I sure as hell like it. Um, so again, extra jumbo frets on this one. Rosewood fingerboard. Um, mahogany neck. I shaved down the uh, necks on my guitars now because it makes it smoother to play. That's my pick holder up there. Grover tuners. Best tuners in on the planet, in my opinion. I've never fucking had a problem with them, ever. Um... <laughs> this is just stupid shit. I was drunk and painted that on the back of there. This is a little flying... Uh, some flying elephant. little naked chick down there. She's not, like, really naked, but... She has a titty sticking out. <laughs> Checker strap. Uh, a little bit of buckle wear and shit. So I used to wear belt buckles and stuff. My old days. Belt buckles and chains and stuff. You know, good old days. This is my newest electric, and this is my ESP EC1000. Um, this is volume, volume, tone. Again, skull knob on the tone. Um, another tone pros, but unlike... Um, Mr. Scott Groves, uh, um, tunematics where they're super sharp. Mine seem to be a lot better, and they have grooves taken out where the strings lie, which is way fucking better. Um, EMG 81, EMG 60 in this, in the neck on this, sounds absolutely wonderful. Um, another rosewood fingerboard. This entire guitar is bound with abalone, pearl abalone, all the way, all of these fret markers, the flags, all the way up the side of the neck, all the way up the headstock. It's got uh, lock, um, ESP's own locking tuners. See, they got the locking knobs on there. I always have pick holders on the back. It's got this volute. And this is the best thing about... This is what I think that Gibsons need to start doing more. Is putting volutes on the back of their headstocks right here. This makes the headstocks stronger. They don't break. I don't know why they don't put them on all of their... You know, Les Pauls. Because they've had such a complaint about, you know, their headstocks breaking. Well, it doesn't when you got the volute on there. And that's what that's called, a volute. Um, once again, sanded neck. I know people are going to be like, oh my fucking God, I can't believe you do that to that guitar. Well, if you felt it, you would understand why I do it. It feels way better. Your hands are free to move a little bit easier because you're not getting stuck when you're all sweaty. Yeah, the Pink Floyd strap. Fucking badass. Ah, uh, my baby. 
This guitar has played every single show I have ever played in my entire life. String through body, pneumatic bridge. This bridge is super worn out. I don't know if you can see it really. Um, it's a little too bright. Can you see the how worn it is over here? Years and years of playing. Things are getting rusted and shit. EMG 81 again. Scraped up right here. Right here. I honestly have no idea what this guitar is exactly made of. I know it has a top and a back made of different woods. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what it is because this was kind of like the prototype of a guitar that came out later. If you can see, there's a little three indented on the bottom of the neck. This was it's a mark to show that this is the third, third one in the run of this. Um, I can't find any information on this particular one. Awesome frets on it. Weird tribal diamond frets. They're fucking badass. Grover tuners, of course. Um, it's also got the volute on the back of the headstock. Um, 24 frets. That's also 24 frets. This is 22. That's 24. Forgot that. Um, yeah. Once again, skull knob on the tone. Just to remember, never fucking touch that, you know? <laughs> In the heat of the moment, you can tell this is different because it feels completely different when you put your hand on it. So it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to fucking touch that. Uh, this has got some fucking wear beat up all over it. A little demon shit. And, uh, it's a semi-baritone, like I've said before, my lightning bolt strap. I am, like, fucking known for this, um, here in, like, Washington. Everyone loved that strap for some reason. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have it, but everyone loved it when I first got it. Uh, those are my guitars. Now let's go to my pedal board. The fun parts. All right, so main cables, I use monster cables because they are the shit, bar none. They just fucking rock. Um, look up any durability reviews or, you know, sound quality reviews and shit, and you'll see why. These things don't break. They got this braided wire that just is fucking indestructible, and uh, everything's reinforced and encased inside them. To where it just, it just kind of rocks. Let's see if I can show you real quick what I'm talking about. Oh, just a second. Okay. See that? How it's encased in there? So this shit does not fucking break. It is solid as hell. The Dimebag Wah. Why I wanted this one? Because it's the shit. <laughs> it has a sweep control, so you can, you know, kind of dial in, you know, if you want a lower sort of wah, wah, or more of a wah, wah, like, you know, it's got different sweep. It's got EQ buttons, you know, volume, uh, the range of your sweep, um, the the EQ of the sweep, you know, different sounds and shit. And it's also got this boost here on the side. Press that in. That little red light is glowing right now because I just have it on all the time. It adds a little pinch of gain, you know, for some sustain. And it boosts the signal louder, too, which is the shit. That pedal is just ungodly sounding. Now that I've got it dialed in where I where I want it that thing is badass it took me a long time to really like figure it all out and get it there boss NS2 noise suppressor 
Um, for anyone that's watching this and you know is thinking about you know getting some of the stuff that I'm showing, don't get these anymore unless you can find them on eBay that are pre 2005 or 2007 or something. They started making these with the connections inside with inferior products. It's like a fucking like aluminum or some shit instead of copper. And uh, the new ones suck your tone badly. Like, very badly. They're just tone suckers like a motherfucker. So, um, But these old ones are the shit. They are trusty as hell. Never had a problem. It works perfectly. Does what I want it to. Couldn't ask for more. Um, phase 90... Uh, the Eddie Van Halen one has, you know, a class, a button where you can do like a classic phase 90 or you can do kind of a more modern, you know, um, more swept sort of phase, which is really cool. Um, I have it on the more aggressive one. Um, this is, okay, this is the pedal that adds... To my distortion, okay? So, this pedal, I don't know if I can show you. You can see underneath. Oh, shit. Okay, so, with this pedal, I have the volume, or the gain, the overdrive, rolled all the way off. Literally, completely off. I can't turn it anymore. I have the balance usually turned all the way up. I didn't just a minute ago. I don't know why. I don't know how it fucking switched, but have that all the way up. You know, tone around the middle. I usually have it over here because I EQ my amp out a little different. And uh, what that does is it creates a natural compression and um, cuts out the flub in the low end. You know, it keeps that punch that kind of when you palm mute, it's kind of, it's pushing air, you know, it's hitting you in the chest, that jun, jun, jun. but it's keeping it nice and tight and it's not getting woofy or, you know, flubby or anything. That's what this does. This is basically just my backup for that. Sometimes I'll fuck with the EQ on it and stuff and just use it for like a blues kind of crunch just for fun because this pedal Honestly, this pedal is pretty comparable to this one. This is, if anyone didn't know, the Maxon OD-808 is the original Tube Screamer. It was actually made before the TS-8, the Ibanez TS-808. Their sister companies, Maxon, created this pedal. And Ibanez, you know, Maxon is a Japanese company. Ibanez wanted to do it. You know, so they made the TS-808, and that's what we all know and love. But this was the original. And um, so I had to have one. These are a little expensive. <laughs> so these ones cost less, but they sound fucking really good. Like, they actually do sound very good. I wouldn't put that pedal down at all. A um, little bit more kind of... hair to it, I guess. I don't know. A little bit different tone. A little bit different voicing. But still, comparable. Um, Neo Clone. It's got a depth switch. You know, basically how thick you want your chorus. You know, the rate. I usually have it pretty low, so it's kind of just really kind of just weird. You know, weird phasey sounding sort of, but subtle. Um, it's modeled after the Nano Clone or whatever, but smaller, <laughs> more compact, and I like that because I built this fucking board out of a fucking shelf. <laughs> Actually, that shelf that's sitting back there with all my cases. Yeah, it's one of those boards. <laughs> I don't, like I said, I don't have a shitload of money to go and you know spend on random shit like that. So just. Sometimes I'll just build shit for myself. It's delay pedal. 
this is definitely a kind of I don't have a whole lot of money so I'm but I need a delay I gotta get this sort of deal that's kind of what I did with this it's actually not bad it's an Akai analog delay it is true bypass um, actually I think all these pedals are true bypass um, but you know, it's got some cool options and stuff but it's just not as crisp as I would like it to be I, I really want to get the carbon the MXR carbon copy that either that or the memory boy or the memory man and memory boy probably because it's just a little smaller and less expensive fuck the memory man is like 300 and something bucks yeah fuck you but uh and this is my tuner which is pretty fucking self-explanatory but um it's the old one it's the TU2 it's not the TU3 so it's I like it a little bit better I don't know it just seems easier to use um I use that for just a mute a lot you know just to shut my guitar you know off when I don't want you know excess shit and then my foot switch which as you can see I have it labeled so this is my fucking main chunk chunk this is the clean if I turn this off and this off it's the crunch channel and then this is the effects loop which basically I have it set as just a volume boost I hit that button and it just clicks me up a few decibels so um, that's basically how I use that and uh, I have all my cords you know taped down and shit so I don't nobody trips over them when they come over say what's up want to jam or anything um, this is my new stereo I just got it should sound a little bit better through the recordings and stuff that mixed with the new phone because that's the one I was playing through and I've had that probably since I was about 12 years old 11 or 12 yeah <laughs> it's got a bunch of shit written all over it and stuff but yeah this thing rocks nice subwoofer in the front and um, that's beer the beer, beer emblem, Bud Light, and uh, I think that basically covers it. Um, the other guitars that you may have seen in my other videos, I traded for that Fender Stratocaster, so that's most likely why you know some of you are probably going, Where's, where's that other acoustic and shit? That's where it is. I only have the one acoustic now. And, um, 